Lastly, but most importantly, I wanted to mention Soken. Masayoshi Soken, Masayoshi Lahi Soken, the composer. He does most of 14's music. Others, I think, have contributed here and there, including Uematsu, who I think composed the main themes for 14, but at some point he got ill after he got ill in 2019. Soken did all of the soundtrack. I wanted to bring up him specifically. It was because, for those of you who watched the, the recent fan fest, at the tail end of it, Soken revealed that he had secretly been working on the music for Shadowbringers 5.3 while he was hospitalized with cancer since uh, March of last year for about six to seven months. He composed To The Edge, as you guys mentioned, and the, the rest of the music for 5.3 as well. From a freaking hospital bed, battling cancer while not even telling the rest of the development team. Unbeknownst to them, Square and Yoshida had arranged for him to keep working in the hospital with support from his core audio team. And it was super mentally and emotionally rough on him. But that's pretty insane that the reason he wanted Yoshida to keep the cancer a secret was because he didn't want his other teammates to worry about him. Because he thought that if he told the development team, it would most likely, most importantly, affect their performance. And he didn't want that because of how it would potentially negatively affect the game as a whole as well. And this was the second time, at least for me, that I saw Yoshida tear up on stage again over finally having his team back, his team member back, finally having his best co-workers and his best friend, I think, back on the Final Fantasy XIV team. Personally, I think that he must have feared that maybe Soken might not have survived. From what I understand, the cancer is in full remission, and that's why Soken was able to attend the live presentation of the 14 Live Fest, the Fan Fest, and play the Lahi. He said something like really, really touching during that. He said that the fan response to Shadowbringers 5.3 was what kept him going. And Yoshida, of all people, knows personally, I think, what that feels like to not have to have basically nothing but the love of the fans, love of the game, to keep you going. That's why I'm right now, I'm 95% convinced that Soken is going to be working on 16's soundtrack as well. The other 5% of me thinks that he'll be busy working on, still working on 14, and it'll be probably another composer like Sekito or the Mizuta. They were the ones that also contributed to A Realm Reborn's OST. But after the reveal from Soken, I feel it's essential that 16 be composed by him to some capacity. In fact, I'd be shocked at this point if Soken weren't the composer for 16 in some way. And not just because it was his composition that you heard towards the end of the Awakening trailer, and the likelihood that he was one of 16's core team members before Creative Business Unit 3 was even a thing. You know, I always got the sense that Yoshida was the one with the real deep spiritual crying on his knees conviction of making 14 as great as possible. But I think up until now, I didn't really get a sense of who he was either. I'm now convinced beyond a doubt that he shares the same sacred duty and responsibility to the fans that Yoshida does. That speech that he gave was super important for the fact that even if other members of his team, Ishikawa, like you can tell from like the expression on her face that she had no idea that this cancer was even a thing. She was very moved by it because she, she was genuinely remorseful for having like pushed him for creating so many songs and making so many minor adjustments, never realizing that he was doing it from a hospital bed during cancer treatment. And his response to her was really telling. He said that he didn't want them, didn't want her to treat him any differently, that he wanted them to give him as much work as they normally would have had he just been normally working as a regular member of the team. That kind of treating me no differently than the rest of the team because we all have a common purpose was what got him through that treatment. I've worked on film sets before and I've seen ones that worked and ones that worked very well and ones that were the complete opposite. And a creative team that makes you know movies or TV shows or games or whatever the process of creating it is very fragmented. You got hundreds of people working on individual parts and when the pressure gets hot, there's millions of dollars at stake and it's all this kind of one big locomotive that once it starts, it really does not stop easily. 
You want a game development team where its members are so much on the same wavelength with each other, as far as what their purpose is for even creating the game to begin with. And having Soken share that story, in a sense, was the reminder of that united team bond that unifies them, that bond of sacredness in their mission to get the fans as excited as possible for 14, certainly, but 16 and overall just Final Fantasy in general. And it sounds like yeah, it sounds like such a simple, basic thing. Like, of course, don't we all, as the same members of the team, have to work together to achieve that common goal, to create that great common game? But trust me, it's very easy to lose that sense of purpose when the shit hits the fan. Yoshida said during that speech that Soken had told him if he doesn't have something to work on, namely if he doesn't have the Final Fantasy to work on that means something to him, he has nothing to live for. And it really sucked that no one could visit Soken because of COVID. But collectively, they knew that players were waiting for 5.3. Players were waiting for Endwalker and players are waiting for 16. And to him, that was the best medicine to cure that cancer is the cheers from his fans. Soken was one of the original people who really believed in Yoshida. 10 something years ago, Yoshida gave a speech before 300 something developers on the original Final Fantasy 1.0 team. And they were all, well, what the hell's going on with this new director? They all went to bail. And Yoshida said that it was Soken who walked up to the front of the stage, pumped up his fist and said, yeah, let's do this shit. Yoshida had actually lost another coworker and friend to cancer. And he wrote about it in this post blog. Soken going through cancer treatment and having to conceal this from the rest of the development team, I'm sure it must have been a really hard decision for him. That's why when people ask me why I think Final Fantasy 16 will be, if nothing else, a very special game, is because of the people behind him. There's something really special about Yoshida's character and the character of those he chooses to become a part of his core team that has this really like unifying emotional effect on the rest of the team, which in turn transfers over to the players and the fans of the game. These guys are clearly busting their asses, going above and beyond to bring us the best game that they possibly can because of how much the game means to them and how much the fans' enjoyment of the game means to them. And in the case of Soken, our enjoyment of his games is his medicine. It literally saved his life. And frankly, that was also the reason why I wanted to make all those Final Fantasy 16 videos because it seems to me like the developers care as much about the game as much as we do. And it's not like, oh, I care about the game because I care about my job. Because it wasn't his job to compose music from a hospital bed with cancer. But he did it anyways. That's really all fans of a game or a series really even want. Just to know that the developers care as much, if not more, about the game than we do. And regaining enough faith in the Final Fantasy fans to prove that, you know, Final Fantasy games can be great again. And in a way that you probably can't imagine just yet. Maybe because you've you become so numb to the, the same shit that we've been subjected to as Final Fantasy fans ourselves before they took the reins and changed everything with A Realm Reborn. And that asking for that faith to be really excited about Final Fantasy games again isn't just some boilerplate PR or like a slogan they copy and paste it on a scrum board, but regaining the faith of fans whose faith was perhaps lost for one reason or another is an actual guiding North Star for Final Fantasy XIV 2.0, certainly, but I think for 16 as well. It's a mission statement that feels personal to me as well. It's why I'm so insistent on getting through A Realm Reborn and ultimately all of the Final Fantasy XIV expansions, even though MMOs aren't generally my thing, because I felt it all along that I needed to finish more of 14 until I got a clear sense of who from that team that was involved in 14 will be involved in 16. And probably Takai as well, they share the same attitude as Yoshida and with the same North Star. And now Soken, I'm absolutely convinced is one of them. The living embodiment of the Warrior of Light and Yoshida as a <laughs> nerdy bullshit as it sounds, has a talent for bringing Warriors of Light together, including us, the players. They want things to turn around for the franchise, that's the important thing. Not just that game itself, not just the games that they are working on. They want the entire franchise to kind of turn around 
and be the games that they loved when they were kids too. Because they aren't just the developers, they were fans just like us. I think the relationship with their fans is the biggest thing for me. Because you know what Yoshida and Soken and Creative Business Unit 3 it reminds me of? At least in terms of the relationship to their fans. They really remind me of the way that the Smashing Pumpkins used to treat their fans, the relationship with their fans. For those of you who were not born <laughs> in the 80s, the Smashing Pumpkins were like this amazing visionary alternative rock band that started indie but eventually amassed a huge following of indie fans. But even as they got popular, they were never mainstream. They were perpetually indie, which was part of their charm. And Billy Corgan, who was the lead singer, he mentioned throughout his career that his fans got a lot of flack for being Smashing Pumpkins fans. And so it, it deepened this bond between the band and the fans. Rock bands or like any other famous personalities, once they get big enough, they want to really distance themselves enough from the fans, keep a safe distance away. But throughout their time as a band, the Smashing Pumpkins, despite becoming big enough to be internationally recognized, they maintained the same relationship with their fans because there was such a common North Star that united them all. Like, so as much as I appreciate all the hard work and dedication that Kitase and Nomura put into 7 Remake, Kitase and Nomura and a lot of uh, CBU1, they're very old school corporate square, if that makes any sense. And their attitude towards each other and their fans. It's very like Japanese, humble, respectful, austere Dewey. Whereas the affinity that I feel from Yoshida and Soken and his team with their fans is more like the equivalent of, yeah, we went to freaking war together and we bled and cried and nearly died together. It's this very super visceral heart of darkness shit that being shared publicly for all the world to see. What Yoshida does on stage, tearing up on stage is incredibly rare, almost unheard of in Japan. To go in front of a stage of a live worldwide audience and do that, I can never imagine Kitase and Nomura and CBU1 having that depth of camaraderie that you see on stage at the fan fest between Yoshida and his team and his fans. I still think that 7 Remake is like an excellent game and that parts of 2 and 3 and beyond will be even more excellent just like 7 Original was excellent. But Tactics was also excellent in addition to possessing that very special quality about it that clearly resonated from its creators. 7 Remake's North Star was to give you that same experience of the original game, only different. Kitase, he repeatedly emphasized this many times. The plot ghosts and defying fate and all that stuff, it was all like to serve that North Star of giving us the thing that we remembered only in a different way. But the problem is that that North Star doesn't feel all that personal to me. It feels more like a mission statement born out of market research. But Yoshida's North Star for 14, which was taking the first steps towards regaining the trust of the fans of the series who had long perhaps lost faith in it. That wasn't born, I think, from any market research. That was like a very personal mission statement born from a very personal commitment that he made as a fan of Final Fantasy himself. And one that I'd argue that he's carrying into 16, just in an action RPG form instead of a an MMO. As much as I'm excited for 7 Remake, Integrate when it comes up, the Yuffie DLC and its subsequent parts, I absolutely want 16 to outperform 7 Remake in every way. If for no other reason than for CBU3 to be put in charge of the development of the mainline Final Fantasy games from now on. Because to truly become great again and not just allow the same relapse of writing off the coattails of its previous successes, like Final Fantasy has done ever since Final Fantasy IX, the series, I think, badly needs creators like Yoshida, who have a North Star that is very personal to them. Something that's so personal that it brings them to their knees weeping. So that, you know, when we play the games, we can feel that same way too and keep wanting more and more of it. <laughs>